Yeah, welcome to this uh, demo about building complex SPFX power solution with Max 65 and the possibilities, limits, and opportunities. I'm Paolo. I don't wanna bother you about who I am. So let's go straight to the content. And yes, uh, today we are going to have a look at a solution which is called Contoso Retail. It is a sample solution which is available in the sample gallery. I will show you later where you can find it with the whole source code. And it is a, I would say, quite complex sample solution. Complex because it is made of multiple components, as you will see uh, soon. And uh, the overall goal of this uh, uh, sample solution it is to show you uh, the art of possible with SharePoint framework and with the Microsoft 365 ecosystem in general. In fact, the idea is to have an hypothetical fashion retail company, uh, which is willing to have uh, some uh, Microsoft 365 based uh, tools uh, to manage and monitor the uh, sales of the uh, retail company, uh, the revenues, the returns of products and stuff like that, whether using the desktop uh, experience. So uh, for example, uh, Teams uh, or SharePoint Online uh, on a desktop environment, as well as uh, using, uh, for example, an adaptive card extension in Microsoft Viva Connections, but also being able to use uh, uh, an extension in Teams uh, in order to uh, search for the product in the product inventory of this uh, uh, hypothetical uh, Contoso, Contoso retail company. So <clears throat> the idea is to uh, give you an overview of what you can and what you should do to build uh, such uh, a solution. And from a front-end technology point of view, uh, we created uh, a bunch of uh, web parts with SharePoint Framework uh, because we wanted to have uh, an easy uh, uh, development experience uh, uh, in order to being able to host those uh, web parts uh, both in SharePoint Online and in Microsoft Team as a, a personal app, as you will see soon. At the same time, we use the same, exactly the same SharePoint framework solution to also build an adaptive card extension. So from a packaging and deployment point of view, you can have one solution that you deploy at the customer site, and it will give you the uh, option and the opportunity to run your code both in uh, uh, Viva Connections and in SharePoint and in Teams. Plus, we uh, created a Teams messaging extension using the Teams toolkit, so uh, not using SharePoint Framework, because right now, SharePoint Framework is a great framework for building solutions, which will be automatically hosted uh, in the SharePoint online environment, but it is missing uh, one component, which is the backend infrastructure. So it is a client-side technology. It is great for building uh, client-side based solutions, but there is no backend that you can build with SharePoint Framework. And as such, you need to have something else to uh, create and build a backend. In my uh, demo, in this scenario, I decided to use, uh, as I will show you soon, a uh, backend infrastructure based on an Azure function, which is providing a set of REST APIs secured with Entra ID and also uh, described by an open API endpoint so that this hypothetical backend is based on a, a demo uh, set of uh, products and it is providing via a REST API all of the content to uh, the client-side infrastructure of uh, SharePoint Framework, as well as uh, to a um, messaging extension built with the Teams toolkit, and as well as uh, to any other uh, solution in Microsoft 365 willing to uh, consume this API via REST and using uh, Entry ID for security. And in fact, just to give you an idea, even if we will not dig into it now, but you can rely on the same REST API that we're using in the solution also to create, for example, a plugin for Copilot, or you can use it to extend the Power Platform with the Power Platform Connector. So if you do a proper design of your solution, you can benefit of that design and you can reuse as much as you can all of your efforts to build a solution which will be available across the whole ecosystem of Microsoft 365. Just to give you an idea, this is the architectural diagram, really high level <laughs> architectural diagram of the solution, where for sure we have Entra ID in place because all of this security is uh, uh, based on Entra ID, which is taking care of the user authentication and uh, issuing the tokens and securing the communication across all of the communication channels. Then we have SharePoint Framework Web Parts, which can be used to host the uh, web parts uh, in SharePoint Online or for hosting the um, 
personal app in Teams, as well as for the Viva Connection Adaptive Card. And then we have an Azure app service, which is in between uh, the um, Teams extensibility or the Copilot extensibility and the backend Azure function, because as I was telling you, in, uh, uh, there are scenarios where we need to have a backend infrastructure, and for that we cannot simply rely on SPFX. So now that we have a bigger picture of the solution, Let's move to the demo environment, and I will show you, first of all, how the uh, demo behaves uh, in the UI, and then we will see how we can build such a solution. So let me find the right screen, which is this one. Okay, so uh, this is the personal app in Teams. Uh, what you are uh, looking at is actually a web part uh, posted in a tab in a personal app of Teams. And as you can see, I can switch across different tabs in this application, and I can get for every single tab a different web part, uh, SharePoint framework web part running, providing me uh, some uh, custom content for this uh, uh, hypothetical company. If I go to the inventory one, I can browse through the inventory of my product, I can select the product and see the details of the product. Okay, so this is the user experience inside Teams as a personal app. And to start this experience, the user can have an icon uh, here in the left bar of Teams. But what if your end users are used to work in an environment which is, for example, Outlook.com? So they can go to Outlook.com and they can have exactly the same experience. So let's say they are managing their email messages and they want to move to Contos or Retail. They can do that. And they have exactly the same experience as before, but now hosted inside Outlook.com. And what if your end users want to use Office portal? So the portal.office.com. Again, they can be in their home page. Uh, they can be managing their document in OneDrive or wherever else. And then they can simply say apps and give me the Contoso Retail dashboard again. This is what is possible nowadays uh, with SharePoint framework. If you will properly define a manifest, and I will show you how to do that, uh, so that you can host your solution in multiple and different uh, context is, which is really powerful. Plus, in this solution, we also have, as I told you, the adaptive card extension experience. For mobile users, it is really uh, useful and powerful to being able to have an adaptive card, which will show them information about the products in the product inventory. They can also browse the whole list of products. And again, uh, by leveraging the capabilities that are offered by the integration between Teams and SharePoint Framework, this adaptive card extension has been built with SPFX. I can click on any of these products and I will be brought <laughs> to Teams and I will target the specific product page of the product that I selected. So we can have deep links from adaptive card extensions to Teams to give a connected experience to the end users and bringing them to the right content in the right place inside Teams. And that's just to give an idea of the uh, so-called art of possible with SPFX. Plus the fact that we can also do stuff like that. Let's say that I'm in a chat with one of my colleagues, my colleague Jessica, for example, and I want to have a chat with her and to share some information about a product that I have in my inventory. Again, uh, with a messaging extension, I can click on the plus button in the uh, message composition area. I can search for Contoso and I can trigger, I can activate my Contoso retail extension. And here I can search for some products like the denim products that I have in my product inventory. Let's say that I want to have a chat with her about this product. I can simply select the product. I can price something or not. I'm lazy. I will not. But OK, I can use an adaptive card inside the chat. And the content of the adaptive card has been generated by the extension that I created with the Teams Toolkit inside my solution. So you see, plenty of options to create really connected uh, solutions in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So, how did I build uh, this solution? Let me switch to Visual Studio Code and let's start from the uh, SharePoint framework uh, solution. Here we have, and let me sit down, otherwise it will be quite complex for me to move around the uh, code base. This is a SharePoint framework solution. It is a SharePoint framework solution based right now on version 1.18.2. It will soon become 1.19 now that it has been released. And we have for every single uh, tab in the uh, personal app in Teams, uh, a web part. So we have the dashboard, we have the home, and we have the inventory. These are the three 
tabs that you see right here, home, dashboard, and inventory. For each of them, we have a web part. Now, let's get just one for the sake of simplicity, like the home one, for example. This is a web part of SharePoint Framework, which will simply render its content through a React component, which we can find right here, the Retail Home TSS. In this component, we are using the PMP controls so that we are relying on the dashboard control, which is the one that gives you this, this, sorry, this nice UI. Let me go to the home, where you have multiple widgets inside a dashboard. You can easily build this kind of experience simply relying on the dashboard control provided by the PMP React controls. And in order to do that, you simply need to build for every single widget that you want to create a uh, React component that will host that widget. So, for example, if you want to have a look at what we do for the return volume widget, this one with the chart and everything else, we simply build the return volumes widget as a control that I created in a library of React components that I share in the whole solution so that I can reuse exactly the same React component wherever I need it. So return volumes, again, will rely one more time on the PMP controls to render the chart with all of the information. And somewhere here, there should be the, and here it is, the chart control from PMP controls that I'm using to render the chart with all of the information. And the same story applies to all of the widgets in all of the dashboards. Now, what is interesting to notice from an architectural point of view is that because we are using the same data set and the same backend services in all of the web parts, in all of the widgets, rather than having the same code in every single component, uh, we decided to use a backend service from an architectural point of view. So I defined an iRetail data service interface in my SharePoint framework solution, and I implemented that service into a class. This class, let me go to the top of the class, relies on the service scope model of SharePoint framework. So basically, I have a constructor for the service class, which will get the service scope of SharePoint framework as an input. And through that one, I will be able to create an instance of the services that I use or the types that I use in SharePoint framework to consume securely via Entra ID and external API, like the AD HTTP client. So when I am in the uh, home web part, for example, in the init method, on init method of my web part, I simply say that through the context of SharePoint framework and through the service scope of the context, I want to consume the setting service or the retail data service of my application. I will get back an instance of that specific service, and then I will be able to use all of the functions provided by, by my uh, data service, like uh, load the return volumes, uh, load the inventory, and stuff like that. So for every single functionality that I want to use, I have a specific method in my uh, service uh, data service class. Now, the interesting part of the story is that I can use exactly the same service uh, class also from the adaptive card extension because it is inside the same uh, project. So if I have a look at the same solution, I also have an adaptive card extension built with SharePoint Framework in this package. And in this one, I still rely on the same model. So this dot context dot service scope, and I still get the instance of the settings and of the data uh, service. Then I can use the information retrieved through the service inside my adaptive cart to build the UI and to have, for example, this uh, supposed to be nice UI with the carousel of the products which I can simply have uh, using uh, in here a timer, a set interval, which will switch from one product to another uh, based on a time. And it will simply rely on a list of products downloaded through the REST API in the backend uh, using my uh, data service class. Now, when I want to deploy the solution, the Teams extension and the uh, Office uh, and uh, uh, Outlook extension are just based on a manifest file that I have right here. Hopefully, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. In the Teams folder, I have a manifest file that I defined. And in this manifest file, I have the, first of all, the version 1.16 of the manifest at least. And in the static tab section, I simply declare all of the React 
components or the web part that I have in my solution that will be used to render every single tab. So the home tab will reference as the content URL the ID of my web part, this one, which is exactly the ID of the web part that I have in my solution right here. This is the ID of my web part. And I will do the same for every web part that I have in my solution. So every single tab will simply render one web part each. By using this, at least this version of the manifest schema, and by using this syntax, I can then out of the box have the capability to host my solution, not only in Teams, but also in Outlook and in Office. Plus the fact that I need to consume my backend API. And in order to be able to do that, my backend API, as I told you, is secured through Entra ID. So in the package solution file of my SharePoint framework solution, I have to declare this section, the web API permission request section, in which I say that for the Contoso retail uh, resource, which is the API registered in Entra ID, I want to have the permission scope to consume that application. Plus, this is something that was introduced in SharePoint Framework, I think in version 117, but I might be mistaken. I can also declare the ID of the app and the return URL so that when an administrator will get my package and install the package in the app catalog, they will be able to do an automatic grant of the permissions to my application and a registration of my application in their tenant. So that if you are building a multi-tenant solution, you can easily deploy the solution on any target tenant and the SharePoint uh, online uh, backend infrastructure will take care of prompting the administrator who is installing uh, your package in the app catalog to register your multi-tenant application in their target tenant and to grant uh, the permission in that uh, uh, target tenant. That's for the uh, SharePoint framework solution. The, uh, extension built with Teams Toolkit on the other side is the following one. Let me open this one as well. This is just a Teams Toolkit solution. And what I want to show you is just that in the search uh, messaging extension that was created automatically using the Teams Toolkit uh, in, uh, UI, I have in my search application the handling of the handle Teams messaging extension query method, which is the one triggered whenever a user will start searching for something through your search messaging, messaging extension. And in this one, we can rely again on Teams effects and on the Teams toolkit capabilities to do what? To make a REST request against the backend API, which is hosted on Azure, and to use the on behalf user context, meaning that whatever I will search for in the UI of Teams right here, will be also secured with the security context of the current user. So if this hypothetical list of products is filtered by security based on who the user is, we can have such kind of capability in our search extension so that we can just return all of the products that the current user is allowed to see. We can do filtering ACL, okay? Access control uh, lists for our product. We get the on behalf token and we simply consume our API and then we build a list of adaptive cards, which can be one or more, which will provide the actual content of every single product searched by the user. Okay, so this was just to give you an idea of, again, the art of possible. You have some useful links if you want. Thanks for uh, uh, attending this demo and back to you, David. Thank you. Thank you.